Hello, I'm Michael O'Connell, and in today's video we're going to be modeling the temperature profile of a bar using explicit differencing. I have the bar drawn on the board here. We have the left boundary set to 50 degrees Celsius and the right boundary set to 80 degrees Celsius. The bar begins at room temperature and then there's no heat generation nor is there any heat losses for the bar during this heating process. So what we want to look at in this video are temperature profiles, specifically how the temperature changes with respect to position inside the bar, also with respect to time. Okay, so we will have the temperature changing, let's say, with respect to position at some sort of time, five seconds, okay? Of course, eventually we should reach a steady state in which we have a linear temperature profile for this bar, okay? So what we can do here at the outset is write the heat diffusion equation for the x direction because we just have one dimension here, the length of our bar, okay? And I derived the heat diffusion equation in the previous video. So we have the second partial derivative of the temperature with respect to position. And then this is going to be equal to the inverse of the thermal diffusivity multiplied by the first partial derivative of temperature with respect to time, okay? And notice I ignored the heat generation term because we don't have any heat generation. And we can multiply both sides by alpha. I think that makes it look a little better. You don't have one over a certain term. What we need to do next here is we need to approximate these derivatives. Okay. And that means we need to make small changes in time, right? We need to have, we need to look at how the temperature changes when we move forward in time a small amount, okay? Small amount delta t, let's say. Okay, that will be our time step. Similarly, we'll do the same thing with respect to position delta x. This will be a little more involved because we're taking the second partial derivative with respect to position, okay? And then we need some sort of index, so to speak. Th this is our increment, but we can have an integer, let's say for position j, right? And this is like a counting number. So you start at zero, right, when we don't have any time yet. And then one, one position increment, right? One position increment, two position increments, right? So we can use this index to keep track of where we are in our bar, okay? I did not really mean for that to rhyme, but I think that's funny. Probably no one else does. Okay, so this is a counting number. We can use n for time, okay? So what this means is that we can actually write an expression for the time and the position, okay? That's what those terms are for, right? And those are based on our time in increment, delta t, and the position increment, delta x. Okay, so x, where we are, will depend on j times our position increment, and then likewise, the time would be n times delta t. Okay, so we have that started. This is the small change in time, the small change in position. Now let's actually do this explicit differencing, okay? So this is an explicit method for approximating these derivatives. So what would we do in this case? Let's, let's start with the more complicated one, actually. So we're looking at the second partial derivative of temperature with respect to position. Let's take the first partial derivative. What would that look like? So we have our increment, delta x, okay? I would say here we want to look at the temperature at the next position step at some time. We have to evaluate this at some time. We could do n, or we could do the later time step, n plus 1, but we'll, we'll use n, okay? And then we want to take the difference, of course, of what the temperature was at the previous time step. Okay. Sorry, I meant to say the position step, okay, at the previous position, okay? So, and of course, this is all at a given time. So we're trying to approximate the temperature by looking at, okay, we have a temperature here at the same time and then a temperature here. And we're going to divide that by our small increment delta x to approximate the temperature at a given point, okay? Because ultimately we need that to make that graph of temperature with respect to position for some time.
time, right? Okay, we need to be approximating, okay, well, what is the temperature at this point? And what is the temperature at that point? And that's what this derivative is doing. Now, of course, this term, it's a second derivative. So unfortunately, this one isn't, isn't quite as simple, okay? So the second derivative looks at how the first derivative changes, okay? Of course, with, still with respect to position. So what would this look like? This size is totally not going to match with how big I wrote this, but that's okay. So in this case, I'll actually draw these lines again because I'm going to use them to explain this. We, we can look at how the first derivative changed by looking at how the temperature changed at a given time based on what the previous temperature was at the prior, I should have said the previous position, okay? So that would be where we have the temperature at J, okay, minus the temperature at the previous position, okay? So that's one step back. Before, we went one step forward here at J plus 1, and then this is J. But now we're going to look, well, what was our change here from the previous position, J minus 1, okay? So that's the term that we're after. Again, we're evaluating this second derivative, of course, at the same way at N. And now all of this, be careful, get to go all the way across, and this is, well, how did this change over delta x, okay? Because, again, the, these two separate entities, we're subtracting these entities because we're looking at how the first derivative changes. That's what the second derivative is, okay? And, again, this is the explicit differencing approximation that we're using, okay? So... Now, we can actually evaluate this. This is fairly easy, right? So here, those two terms were the same. So we would have minus 2 tj comma n, okay? Those are subscripts, of course. They're there to describe, again, our position and our time step. And then we also have j minus 1 comma n. And then all of this would actually be we had delta x, the common denominator for those fractions. All of that divided by delta x, so this actually under here is a delta x squared. Okay, great. So that was the more difficult part of approximating the second partial derivative of temperature with respect to position. Now let's look at how we would do that for the time. That's much, much easier, right, because it's just the first partial derivative. Okay, so... We can, and of course, just like we did before, we had to evaluate this at some position, right? At some position J. Okay, and I'll, I'll try to be careful to always put the position, then the time, just so you don't get confused, because I would get confused as well. So we want to look at what the temperature was at that position at the previous time and subtract it from the position at the current time. Okay. And then all of that divided by our small increment of time, delta t. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to take this some time here to actually put this all together so we can write an expression that we'll be able to use. All right, now I have the equation written. Notice that I made a mistake here. We were subtracting a negative t sub j minus 1 comma n, so this is actually positive here on the right-hand side, so I just wanted to make you aware of that change. Now, we can actually simplify things, okay, because we have our position step here squared and our time step over there, so we can pull this out of the parentheses here, and then we can multiply both sides by the time step, so we'll get a nice constant here, and this we're going to express as r in our code. So that will be important for us, okay? And I'm just going to write the expression that we'll use. Now, we have to ask ourselves here, what are we after? We're after the temperature at some position J at the next time step, so we can make our next graph of the temperature profile of the bar and how those temperatures have changed with respect to position. Remember, we have that graph of temperature with respect to position at different times. So if we need to make the next plot, okay, at that same, at all of these same positions, we need 
the n plus 1 here. We need the temperature at the next time step. So this is what we need to isolate. Okay. So that is actually pretty easy to do. And when we add T sub J comma N to both sides, we already have that term here. Okay. I'm also going to distribute this R onto each term. Okay. Which you'll see here. Okay. Because this is the expression that we will be using as the foundation for what we're about to go do in Python to see if we can get the temperature profiles for this bar using this explicit differencing. So let's see what this final equation looks like. I'm going to erase this part here. Okay. So again, we're writing an expression for the temperature at position J at the next time step. Okay. And then we've distributed R. So we have this term here. Now, this is added to both sides, so this coefficient would be 1 minus 2r, okay? This is multiplied on the 2, the r, and then we add that term as well, so we get the positive 1, t, j, comma, n, and then plus r times t sub j minus 1, comma, n. Okay, so this is the expression that we are going to use. This is what we've obtained from the explicit differencing method here. And we are going to code this up in Python and see how we can express the changes in temperature with respect to position at different times for this bar. Let's begin making a temperature profile plot for the bar. We are going to use numerical Python and Plotly to do this. And then we have all of our constants here that I've already put in just to speed things along here. We have the thermal diffusivity, the position step of one meter, a time step of half a second. Then we have R that relates all those constants together. And then we have our initial temperature, so obviously we're at room temperature, and then we set the left boundary to 50 degrees Celsius, the right boundary at 80 degrees Celsius. Now, we need to specify the length of our bar. Okay, so how many position steps do we want to take? Well, that will depend on the length, so if we have a 20 meter bar, we'll take 20 different steps. Okay, this will also dictate the length of our x-axis, which is the position. Okay, because we're going to be plotting the temperature with respect to position. So we can use NPA range for this, and the size can be based on the number of position steps that we take, which makes sense. Now, for the temperature, we need our array that we store the temperature values for each position at each increment in our bar because we've divided it up into 20 one meter increments. We want to have that start at room temperature, okay? And we want this to match. So we're going to use shape like size n, of course, okay? It needs to match with the number of position increments that we have, and this will be room temperature. But we have a problem here. We need to set the left boundary to 50 degrees Celsius and the right boundary to 80, and we can just index that here and assign those values. So Python indexing begins at zero, so that's going to be TL. I could set it to 50, I guess. And then on the end, that would be index negative one. We have TR. Okay, excellent. Now, what we need to do here is we need to have a for loop calculate the temperature values at each position for the later time step. Okay, we already have the initial temperature values, so we can start this for loop at one. Let's do 100 iterations. That may not be enough, but we can see. Now, we were just deriving an equation on the whiteboard, which specifies the temperature at the later time step based on the temperatures at the previous time step at different positions, though. That's the key. So we're going to have to do some slicing of this array. What is that going to look like? Well, specifically, we know that we are interested in the temperatures that are changing, and those are in between the left and right boundaries. So these are those 18 increments that are actually in between that, of course, begin at room temperature. So how do we slice that? Well, we begin at 1, okay, because Python indexing would begin at 0, and we already have that constant temperature of 50 degrees Celsius, so we don't want to start there. And then we want to go all the way to the penultimate value, so we're going to actually use negative 1, which would be the last value. But again, in the slice here, 
that's not going to be included, okay? So that last value of 80 degrees Celsius, even though we're using the negative one index, is not included in our slice. And of course, this is equal to the expression that we had on the whiteboard, which I actually have in a Word document here, okay? And then this is highlighted in yellow. Notice here, we have these temperature values at different positions at the current time step n. That's what we're going to be using on the right-hand side of this equation here in our Python code. So here we have sub j plus 1, okay? So that is all of our position steps. We're moving 1 to the right, okay? So what would our index look like? Of course, we're going to be multiplying this by r, but for our slice, we've moved 1 to the right, so we're not at 1, we're at 2, and now we get all the way to the end, so we use a colon. Then we had the 1 minus 2 times r, and then this will be multiplied by actually the same slice from 1 to negative 1 here, okay? Notice that this is at position j, okay? So it's the same thing that you have over here. The only difference, of course, is it's at the current time, okay? So this is what the for loop will be using. It will be using the temperatures at the current time to calculate the temperatures at the later time. So what do we have next here? We have r times the next slice. Now, this was sub j minus 1, so this time we're moving to the left. So we're beginning at 0. I'll just use a colon for that. And then we're going not all the way to the penultimate value, but the value before that. So it's actually to negative 2 for that index. Okay. Now, what we are going to do here is use a conditional in which we divide our index by a certain number, which will dictate the number of plots that we actually have. So this is called the module. If we divide 30 by, let's say, 7, I'm going to use the percent sign, which is the module. That's how, This will actually return the remainder. So obviously, 7 goes into 34 times, and then you have a remainder of 2. Well, we can divide our index by a certain number and check if that remainder is equal to zero, and use that to make a plot oh so many times, right? So we don't want to make a hundred plots, okay? So let's divide our index by 10, and every time we have a certain index divided by 10 where the remainder is zero, we'll actually make a plot. So that's why we have this within our for loop. And then we can do the fig.add scatter right under here. And we'll use two equal signs to check for equality, of course. Okay, and I think I do need a colon there, don't I? All right, so now we're ready to actually make our plot. Before I forget, I would like to plot the initial temperature values at each position increment. So I'm going to do this outside of the for loop that we've created. And we can add the scatter plot now. Our x-axis is dictated by x, which has our position increments, our y-axis will be based on the temperature array that we have up here. Of course, this is just going to have our initial temperature values because we're not within the for loop. And then our mode is going to be lines because we're going to be doing a line graph. In our name, we can have a legend with the time that corresponds with each plot we make. So we can use an F string for that. We'll put that in as zero because this is the initial time. So this is good because I can copy and paste this down under this conditional statement here. It will look very similar, except this F string, we'll use a brace here for I multiplied by our time step DT. Okay, so we have the course, the time that corresponds with each plot that we make with our for loop. So that will be excellent. Now we can update the layout that we have. So fig.update layout, and we can specify the width and the height, of course. And one thing we like to specify as well is our template. Okay. So let's see if we get a temperature profile. And we do. It looks pretty good. What problem do we have with this? Well, the problem that I see here is we don't reach steady state. We should have a linear temperature profile from 50 degrees Celsius over at the left boundary of our bar. 
and then all the way up to 80. Okay. And we just, we don't see that. Okay. So this is pretty good though. And we see our temperature increasing with each given time there. So it is heating up. So this, this does seem very accurate. How can we adjust some things to make this better so that we reach steady state? Well, we can increase the number of iterations we do. And let's actually also increase this so that we don't make a lot more plots. So we'll set that to 25 and 400. That looks good. Looks really good, a lot better. So this is our steady state, this light blue, 187.5 seconds. Now I'm gonna make a slight change to our constant R, which actually is extremely important. And this will lead into the next video that I do because we're gonna encounter a problem here. So let's say to save time with our computing of these values to make this temperature profile for our bar, we wanna increase our time step, okay? And we have, let's say the same number of iterations, okay? so. This, now, if we want the same amount of total time, we could decrease the iterations and increase our time step. Okay, so that would save computing time. But if we do that, even to just 0.5, let's say 0 0.8 or 0.51, we are going to encounter a problem here. Let's go 380, okay? Oh my goodness. So this is just an absolute disaster. And that is not accurate, of course, right? So we have the temperature shooting off to who knows where. Okay, let's, let's go to a bigger time step just to see if this is actually a consistent issue. And what I will talk about, and oh my gosh, this certainly is a consistent issue. There is no temperature in the universe that is 10 to the 50 second power in Kelvin. Okay. Not even the sun, right? <laughs> Nothing's that hot. So this isn't working. This is not what the temperature profile of our bar of our bar would look like. That's not what it would look like at different times. Okay. So this is an issue of stabi stability. I was going to say stupidity. Uh, may maybe so on my part, but this is an issue of stability. So we are going to be performing a von Neumann stability analysis in the next video, in which I show why this value for our time step actually cannot exceed 0 0.5 seconds. So I thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one when I actually explain why we encounter this issue. And then in the subsequent videos, we're gonna fix the issue by a method in which we do implicit differencing. Thank you so much for watching.